Good morning. I heard some that they we're going to get a threat of snow this week. Woohoo! <laughs> Enjoy the warm weather we got. I got to see some sunburnt faces out there. I went uh, fishing the other day. I didn't get too sunburnt, but uh, while, uh, uh, never mind, I'll get to that later. <laughs> We're, 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 we're going we're gonna to go forward from where we left off in November. We just finished Jeremiah back then and Lamentation. And I decided to take a break from the Old Testament till, I don't know, uh, till after Easter. Uh, does anybody remember the, the song we played from McDonald's? You know, you deserve a break today. All right, time to get away. But, but anyway, so, so just kind of a review. The last chapter we read in Jeremiah was backtracking in time. Uh, this chapter was an event before Jeremiah's last message to Judah while they lived in Egypt. Before Jeremiah was invited to preach when Jehonan and the people of Judah packed and fled to go to Egypt. It was before Gedaliah, one of the governors that was set up, was assassinated. And before Zedekiah watched his sons murdered and then had his eyes gouged out. And, and then Jerusalem was burned to the ground before Zedekiah fled to Jerusalem against Jer Jeremiah's plea to stay. Fled Jerusalem. And then before Zedekiah refused to surrender to the Babylonians, before Jeremiah was thrown into the cistern. And before the false prophet that Jeremiah says, you know, you, you, you got it wrong. We've got to surrender to Babylon. Babylon's going to take care of us. And the false prophet says, no, we're going to be all right. God's going to protect us. And, and Jeremiah says, no, no, no. And uh, he says, be, and on top of that, uh, you're going to die within a year. And he died. And he died. So this was before then. Um, before Jehoiakim was taken captive. And the nobles and the upper class were taken captive to Babylon. And this was just four years after the first son from Josiah was to be king of Judah, Shalom. He was taken to Egypt, never to return. You know, this is just some of the drama that was being played out in, in Jerusalem around Jeremiah. But, uh, you know, we say, why look back, right? Some say hindsight is twenty twenty. Others say history teaches us one thing. History repeats itself. And if history repeats itself, we can almost look forward to, hey, what's going to happen to us? What, what, is, what is the parallel that, that the Babylonian, that, that Jeremiah, the lamentation is, is teaching us that, that we can learn from? We're going to go and plug into where Jehoiakim was taken captive with the upper class to Babylon almost 20 years before Jeremiah's last words. Um, we're going to read Jeremiah's last words just to review in uh, Jeremiah 51, 58. So if you'll turn there. But, but Jeremiah finished living his life preaching to the rebellious Israelites who refused to surrender at, to Babylon. As God commanded through Jeremiah so they could escape with their lives. And we backtracked about 30 years in November for a short chapter of 45 of Jeremiah. But Jeremiah had a scribe going back another 20 years before chapter 45. You know, Jeremiah was called during a prosperous time in, in Judah. Things were going good. Josiah, he was the man. He was the king. He was a, he was a man and he was a king that followed God with all his heart, soul, and mind. And things were going well. And Babylon was not a threat. Assyria was, that was a threat had been squashed. And now actually Judah at this time, I believe, was an ally to Babylon. Because of the way Josiah protected the frontier of the Babylonian Empire as it was moving toward from, from the Egyptians. And when King Necho decided he was going to fight the Babylonian frontier... Josiah came right on the bandwagon and, and uh, jumped in and he started fighting against King Necho. Of course, he perished during that time. And then Josiah's son became king and he was wicked. And things went downhill from there. And, and then pretty soon we see a huge tug of war between the Egyptians and the, the, um, the Babylonians. Is where, where, where are the Israelites? Where is Judah going to put their faith or trust in? Josiah's first son only lasted two months on the throne when Egypt took him captive and set up Jehoiakim. I got a little 
little button here, but okay. So we're gonna we're gonna focus. Okay, this is a 500 year span, somewhere around there. But this is where Jeremiah was, okay? So he drops down into this period of time. And, and so Josiah, we're just going to read about that. Jehoiakim, what, this is Shalom. This is where we're going to focus in now, right here. Right here, the deportations, deportations from Judah. But uh, this, is, this is all the drama that played out. And, and at the end of the, Zedekiah, um, Jeremiah wrote all the way to post 586. And it really confuses me because the years go backwards. Okay? So 586 is, is younger than 615. It's later. Later. Not younger. Later. But uh, that's, that's kind of the point where we're at. But, but these kings along with Judah lived in disobedience. And the stable kingdom fell apart as Egypt and Babylon took turns with this situation. And basically, this group of people right here was annihilated. They, they, they didn't survive. They didn't escape. The ones that escaped were the ones that got deported. The exiles. The ones that went. You can see the arrows going down. So they got deported. They were saved. All right. You know, Babylon took turns to plunder Judah, and Judah was caught in a tug war between the two. You know, sometimes in life, okay, we got to make a decision. We have a, a kingdom that, we, that God has told us to do, but we're in this world. And Jesus says you can't serve two masters at the same time. You know, you either got to gotta hate one and love the other. It, it just doesn't work. It's going to rip you apart. And the ones that stayed, the ones that, that tried to preserve their lives, that tried to live their lives the way they wanted to, they ended up being annihilated. The ones that submitted to Babylon, they were the ones that survived. They preserved the nation of Israel. Babylon was like an escape room. Babylon was a temporary place of safety for 70 years as Israel experienced the judgment for rebellion against God. You know, we followed the ones that, that, that took the escape route to the end of Jeremiah and Lamentations last fall. They didn't survive. They were gone. This series, we're going to pick up again with, with the ones that did follow the advice of Jeremiah and escape with their lives. Anybody familiar with an escape room? Right? Cool. Have you, have you ever gone in an escape room? We did. We went to one in Denver. I want to take our board to an escape room. <laughs> right? Like, an escape room is, is, is a mental, physical adventure based, based game or a team building exercise in which players solve series of puzzles and riddles using clues, hints, and strategy to complete the objective at hand. Escape rooms may consist of a large single room or span multiple rooms. Players are given a set time limit to unveil the secret plot which is hidden within the rooms. Games are set in a variety of fictional locations such as prison cells, dungeons, and space stations. What, 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 kind, of a space, what, what kind of escape room did you... Is, you remember? Anyways... It, a terrorist, okay. But, but there's various puzzles and riddles and they themselves follow the theme of the room. My son Tyler went to an escape room in Fort Collins with, with a bunch of his buddies and he was telling me it was a space station. And he and five of his friends, and he was telling me all about it. And, and uh, I was an imagining, I was imagining, man, we should take our board, route, board here. This is so cool, you know. <laughs> it could be our next board meeting. But, but, but the more I think about it, the more excited or, or I like the idea. You know, Wayne, Wayne and Kevin, they, they tried to get me to help them in the well last Friday, but I was fishing at Jumbo Reservoir. <laughs> no way! But that 
was, that was kind of like an escape room, you know? They had, to, they had to cut, they had to figure, they had to, they had to figure out a plan, they had to pull out. They pulled out two, two pressure tanks. One of them was cast iron. I think it was still full water. <laughs> I don't know, they had to drain the water out. They had to cut pipes, glue pipes, uh, and, and all kinds of stuff. Um, wrenching and wiring. But it, we got water today. Bathrooms are... For, they said, if we don't get this done, we'll have to close church. I go, oh, okay. <laughs> I'll go some more fishing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's a good day to fish today, really. Where is everywhere? That's where Alan's at, right? No. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought somebody said he was fishing. Okay. But, but anyways, um, anyways, this particular escape room that Tyler experienced, the simulations plot was a space station. And uh, they were trying to, to stop a nuclear. The, the space station was set up there by the enemies, right? And they had all kinds of nuclear warheads aimed at the Earth to destroy it. And their mission was to, to either to get it to, to stop or to blow the, sta the space station up with disintegrated out in space with its own nuclear weapons. Um, and anyways, it was not a suicide mission because on the space station there was a capsule that, 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 they could, that they could release and that they could be free and let go. But, uh, you know, I could, I could see at, at, on a board where the different gifts and talents of the members on our board could come together as a team to accomplish the mission. You know, Wayne the farmer. Uh, Kevin the banker and caterer, and you could probably throw farmer in all of them, but, but Cindy the accountant, Rolf the, the musician and diesel mechanic, uh, Kyle the power plant manager, and, and me the runner, uh, or, or the fisherman, whatever, but, 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 but you know, it's great to have diversity, it's great to have minds that don't think alike, and uh, you know, and we could, we could figure out the problems from, a pers from different perspectives and exper expertise. You know, I can also imagine the fun we'd have saying, okay, <laughs> we're just going to leave you behind, <laughs> you know, and I don't know who, one of you <laughs> who you want to place those on, but bye guys, see you later in the next life. But uh, we'd have a lot of fun. Uh, and ribbing each other. Who might just get left on the mission if, if they keep screwing up? Okay. But Babylon was Israel's escape room. For 70 years, Israel had to leave the promised land as it was judged and received the rest that it needed for all Israel's failure to observe the Sabbath of the land. Babylon was a temporary temporary home for Israel to thrive and to take God's clues to save their chosen race and then return to the holy promised, turn holy to the promised land as the then powerful Babylon self-destructed. You know, we left off in November with Jeremiah's last words to Babylon in Jeremiah 51, 58. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Babylon's thick wall will be leveled and her high gates set on fire. The peoples exhaust themselves for nothing. The nation's labor is only fuel for the flames. This is the message Jeremiah gave to the staff officer, Sariah, son of Neriah, the son of Mahasaiah. Man, those are wonderful words. When he, when he, names. When he went to Babylon with Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year of his reign, Jeremiah had written on a scroll about all the disasters that would come upon Babylon, all that had been recorded concerning Babylon. He said to Sariah, when you get to Babylon, see that you read all these words aloud. Then say, O Lord, you have said you will destroy this place so that neither man nor animal will live in it. It will be desolate forever. When you finish reading this scroll, tie a stone to it and throw it in the Euphrates. Then say, so will Babylon sink to rise no more because of the disaster I will bring upon her and her people will fall. The words of Jeremiah end here. Okay, please let's turn to Daniel 1. 
Daniel 1. Babylon is a picture or a symbol of this world. Someday this world is going to be destroyed. Someday it's going to burn with intense fire and the elements will melt with a fervent heat. You know, and, and so as we look at this life, we're on in an escape room. We're on Babylon. You know, we finished Jeremiah with, with the, the other book he wrote, Lamentations. But, but looking at the time that Jeremiah had written these words, it, it kind of gives light to, to why, hey, Jeremiah was offered, hey, Jeremiah, you can come to Babylon. We'll treat you right. But, uh, you know, after Jeremiah writes all these scalding words about Babylon, you know, I think he was, even though, even though the people who were at Judah, they threw him in a cistern and threw rocks at him and they mistreated him and, and starved him, you know, he, they probably treated him better than the Babylonians would after, they, after he writes this about Babylon. You're going to be destroyed. Never to, you, all your high gates, your, your gates and your walls, your thick walls, they're going, to, they're going to be nothing. Everything you're doing, all this building and, and the building of your kingdom, it's just fuel for the fire. You know, Jeremiah never went to Babylon, but stayed with the rebellious Israelites, even into Egypt. And his life and his ministry ended with the annihilation of the ones that rebelled against God's word. And a peak into the escape room of Babylon. Those that went into exile and surrendered to Babylon pick up in the book of Daniel. Daniel starts with a focus of four young men that found themselves at the center of Babylonian power. You know, even though they were out in space, removed far away from their homeland, they still had their homeland mission to complete in this escape room. In Daniel 1, man, I'm so excited to get into Daniel. I really am. I really am. And I, and I figured we can, go over, we can go over the groundwork, you know, since it's after Easter and hardly anybody comes after Easter. So, uh, <laughs> so you guys, can, you guys can, can go through the, work, the groundwork of, of where, 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 where are we? Where are we, right? We are, we are right, right here. The deportion from, from Judah, okay? The first one, okay? Daniel, right there. Nebuchadnezzar and his three... Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar... I, I don't know. Nebuchadnezzar, three friends. Whatever that parenthesis. I didn't check that out. But uh, anyways, Daniel was written, started right in here. So we're, so we're backtracking, but this is, this is a view of the escape room. This is a view of, of kind of where we're at in this life. Where, where do we start? How do we act? Do we just take on the, the, new, the new culture, right, of this world? Or do we focus on something that's eternal? I mean, Daniel, I mean... Jeremiah said, Babylon's going to be destroyed. Don't build your future in the Babylonian kingdom. Build it in the kingdom of Israel. Build it in the kingdom of Judah. Build it in the kingdom of God that never leaves, never, never perishes. I mean, the walls in heaven are going to be there forever. So I'm so excited. Okay, so Daniel 1, Daniel 1, I, and I wanted to read so much more, but we didn't have time. Okay, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem to besiege it. And the Lord delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, along with some of the articles from the temple of God. These he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylonia and put in the treasure house of his God. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, chief of his court officials, to bring in some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility. Young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning. Well informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and the literature of the Babylonians. The king assigned them daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years, and after that, they were, enter, they were to enter the king's service. Among these were some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief official gave them new names. To Daniel, the name Belshazzar. 
to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. Uh, we're going to turn to 2 Timothy 2, if you'll turn there. But, but man, I'm so excited to get into Daniel. Uh, Daniel is a key to many prophecies about Jesus, the rapture, and the final judgment of the earth. You know, in, in a sense, this world is a space station with its weapons fastened on the sustainer of the universe. I mean, that's, that's, whole, that's the whole concept of this world. Basically, is, is to destroy the world. Satan wanted to destroy God. And he, he has his eye focused on us. We're going to do this. That is the culture of this world. It's all about me. It's all about preserving me. It's all about building our walls and building our gates. And the, the thing is, it's all fuel for the fire. It doesn't work. Our mission here on earth is to self-destruct and escape with our lives. We can work together with our different talents and personalities here in the space station. It, it, it can be, even can be a ton of fun. I mean, it's a it's great time. But our main mission is to protect the treasure in heaven. For where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. We need to guard our heart. These four characters in Daniel had Hebrew names. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Their, their names are Daniel, Judge of God. Hananiah, Jah is favored, or Jehovah is favored. Mishael, what God is, and Azariah, Jah, or Yahweh, has helped. Okay? Then we get into their new names. Their new names, what they were given. So this is, this is the mission of Babylon for these men. Okay? Belteshazzar signifies the keeper of the hidden treasures of Bel. Bel was one of the gods of Babylon. Shadrach, the inspiration of the sun, which the Chal Chaldeans worshipped. Meshach, the goddess Shak, under which name Venus was worshipped. And then Abednego, the servant of the shining fire, which they also worshipped. So they, 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 they were given names. This is your new culture. This is your new objective. You know, how many of you ha are, are told the objective, what you're to live in this culture of this world? The media. It tells you exactly how you live. You know, you're supposed to live for yourself. You're supposed to find, you know, pleasure for yourself and, and do it all. But exactly what destroys you. Here's the purpose uh, why, why Nebuchadnezzar took these away too as well. He took them as trophies to make a show for evidencing the magnificence of his success. Babylonian king says, Nebuchadnezzar says, look what I did. Nobody was able to destroy Israel. Nobody was able. The Assyrians failed because Hezekiah was there and the Assyrians came there. We're going to destroy it. We got the armies. No God has ever, ever been able to stop us from destroying them and sieging them. And Hezekiah says, no, you're not. And the Assyrians, that was their last, their last attempt on any place. And pretty soon they self-destructed. Not so with the Babylonians. Nebuchadnezzar, man, he got the trophy. He got them. He got Jerusalem. Can you imagine if Babylon got Jerusalem now, today? The whole world would be watching. It was a trophy. Number two, these guys were taken as hostage so that, so that their king, when it, we're going to take care of your people, we're going to take care of your people, People, as long as we take care of your people, as long as you worship or, or do what we say over there in Jerusalem and, and Israel, we'll take care of these exiles. So it was, it was kind of like a, what do you call it, um, uh, fidelity. Hostages for the fidelity of their parents in their homeland. So that they would be concerned to conduct themselves well in light of their children's better treatment. And then number three, as a seed to serve him. You know, he wanted them to serve him. 
Okay, these young men found themselves in an escape room. This Babylonian captivity would use up their entire earthly life. The escape room named them and tried to have them conform to their pattern. They knew it wasn't home, but a place to accomplish a mission with all they knew from the law and the prophets. You know, we talked last week that our hope in Jesus goes beyond this life. You know, one of, one of that's, that's in, in 1 Corinthians 15, 19, is if we only have hope in this, this world, in Christ, we are above all men most to be pitied. You know, if, if we, take, we take God and, and, and we take all our knowledge of God and if we just pour it into this, this living in Babylon, this living in this world, for the enjoyment and the pleasure of ourselves, it's going to be a mess. You're, gonna, you're not going to make it. You're going to self-destruct. You know, and I love this passage out of 2 Timothy 2. And it talks about a soldier. And we're soldiers. We're in foreign country. This isn't our home. In first, 2 Timothy 2, starting with verse 1. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. Endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. Similarly, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I'm saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all of this. This is Babylon. We're, we're living in Babylon. This is, this is the escape room. This 70 or so years that we live in this fabric of time has huge impact on eternity. One day, we will disembark or be destroyed and tangled in this room. I mean, it, it, this is, one day it's going to come to be. Come to be. Either we're going to go, whoo. You know, and, and reach heaven and, and release all this garbage. Or either that or we're going to be entangled in this world and we, we, we won't escape. We, we'll be in Egypt. We'll be, we'll be tied to the land. And we'll disintegrate. This isn't rocket science. Okay? We got a team member. we got a team member. Who do you think that team member is? Jesus took care of the complicated part. He's on our team. And he promises never to leave us or forsake us. You know, he died on that cross so that we could die to our flesh and live to him. He raised from the dead so that, so that we could be raised together with him. And, and, and the process is simple. Be like Christ. We don't have to know all the details of, of the Babylonian captivity. We don't have to know all the details of, of, of the nuclear weapons and how the nuclear weapons work. We just gotta, we just gotta follow Christ. Trust him. Our citizenship is in heaven. And our culture, we get the directives from him. We're going to get back into Daniel and, and uh, next week. And we're going to see how these people did not submit to the culture. But they submitted to their homeland's culture. Where's your homeland? Are you submitting to that culture? If we don't disembark like those that have gone to sleep ahead of us as Christians, as believers, as followers of Christ. If we don't disembark, you know, perish, basically, this world's going to pass away, right? Whether, whether we leave it through in death or when that trumpet sounds, 
and we meet them together with the Lord in the air. This is temporary. With its pains, its ills, its sins, its, its slavery. But we can be free right now as we live our lives separated and living for the kingdom. Let's pray. Lord God, as we live in this world, Lord, help us to see that this is an escape room. This is, this is not our home. Through Jesus Christ, your son, he provided a way out of an escape. And he does so with every aspect of our life. Even the sins that we seem to get entangled in and, and slavery. Lord, he has given us a way out through the cross. Lord, as we look forward to that eternal home. Lord, help us to live in that light now. Lord, help us to live for that kingdom now. As, as Not as citizens of this world, but as soldiers here for the kingdom there. Lord, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came and he paid the price. He made this all possible so that we could escape with our lives to a home that lasts forever. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.